Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, we are going to answer another frequently asked question, and people ask me all the time, Eric, do revolvers jam? And you always hear people say, well, just carry a revolver. You don't ever have to worry about a revolver jamming. Mm, we're going to break into this a little bit. I think you guys are going to find the answer to be quite interesting. Uh, so we'll get into this. Before we get started, I do want to thank our friends at JX Tactical. They have some amazing holsters. Uh, one of the holsters that they make is called the Fat Guy Holster. All right, this particular one, it sits really, really low. And for those of you that are, let's just say, you don't exactly lay off the meat and potatoes. Uh, this is a great holster for those of us that are, let's just say, uh, a little bit more dad bod uh, territory and everything like that. Uh, JX uh, makes this particular holster. It's fantastic. This one's uh, got my shield in it right now. That's my Robar Custom uh, sh Performance Center shield. I really like that holster a lot. Whenever I'm carrying my single stack, I definitely run my JX. And a big thanks for, to them uh, for supporting today's video and uh, bringing this you know content to you and being a part of our channel. Okay, so the answer is... Mm, revolvers typically don't jam, but they can, okay? And I'm going to explain to you uh, some of the situations and, and some of the pros and cons between handguns and revolvers. Yes, revolvers are very reliable, okay? Uh, in, in fact, one could say, well, have you ever experienced a malfunction in a revolver? And many people will probably tell you, heck no, never had a single issue. But if you run a revolver long enough, you know, you can run into uh, issues, Okay, revolvers are great firearms, but they are kind of specific in the way that they're put together. Okay, uh, they have to be timed properly. Um, you, you end up seeing a lot of people. Now, I have this uh, big old Smith and Wesson 500 Magnum here as, as an example. You always uh, see people cowboy the cylinders, like where they'll turn it. Like I'm not going to slam it, but when they turn it like that, and then they go and they slam it. Well, especially on something like this 500, all that mass gets stopped by this tiny little hand right here. You can barely see, but it's just this, it's, it's literally, that's what that part is called, the hand. All right, and that hand locks the cylinder in place, all right? When you see what keeps the cylinder from rotating, it's just that little hand in there that intercepts with those notches. All right, if that hand breaks, the gun is down. So that's why, you know, you should never cowboy your revolver. So, okay, do revolvers jam? Well, generally not, but if you monkey around with the cylinder and you're doing, you know, cowboying the cylinder all the time and you get that hand wore out, you can throw the timing off. And if you get into a real hurry, you know, squeezing off some double action shots, you can actually outrun your own gun. I've seen uh, cylinders fail to index properly or index all the way. So that's just something to consider. You know, you got to take care of your equipment. Uh, any improperly maintained equipment can certainly uh, lend you know, itself to having issues down the road. Now, I broke out my cap and ball revolver here to show you an example. Um, now, when you shoot a cap and ball revolver, you'll always see, see guys uh, do what's called the cal cavalry cock. Right? They'll shoot it, bang, and then they'll lift it back like this, cock it, and then acquire sight picture, shoot, lift it up, and cock it. That's so those spent caps can clear the action because they, they're actually notorious for jamming up the action. Uh, now, the Remington design um, actually wound up fixing a lot of those issues. Now, that's uh, certainly another story for another day. But, yes, revolvers are not perfect. And the early cap and ball revolvers, you know, that's why they had to hold them up when they cock them. Uh, to allow those spent caps to clear the action. So, do revolvers jam? Well, I guess it depends on the revolver you're talking about, okay? Uh, one other issue with, with revolvers, I would say, when we want to discuss pros and cons between wheel guns and, uh, and automatics, is manual of arms, okay? This is a speed loader for a J-frame revolver, okay? We got five rounds of 38 special ammunition. This is plus P ammunition, okay? Now, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but it is a heck of a lot quicker to change a magazine and a pistol than it is to manipulate a revolver. Now, you look at a guy like Jerry Michalik, who is a master revolver gunner, who has been doing it his whole life, and there's many people that can run a wheel gun like nobody's business. But I would say that if you took a person of reasonable expertise and handed them a revolver and a pistol, generally speaking, you're going to be able to get someone to be able to shoot a pistol and reload and manipulate a pistol easier than you will a revolver, especially when you're talking about getting ammo back in the gun. Sure, a J-frame revolver is great for that first five shots, 
but now you got to reload it. So do revolvers jam? Well, no, generally not. However, when you're out of those five shots, you better know some ninja level gun handling to get this speed loader into that revolver under pressure being shot at while moving and taking cover. You see, so the, the, the setbacks of revolvers tend to yield themselves pretty quickly because now you're limited on capacity. Uh, you have a somewhat more involved reloading sequence to reload the firearm under stress. So did the gun jam? Well, no, but you might fumble around trying to play around with the speed loader if you don't know what you're doing carrying a wheel gun. Now, a lot of folks will carry a revolver as kind of a holdout gun. I've been known to do that. I might just carry a J-frame and no extra ammo, just five rounds, you know, if I just want to, you know, go check the mailbox or walk the dogs or something like that. I'm not expecting to get in some lengthy gunfight or something. I just want something to be able to pop a few rounds if I see a snake or, a, you know, coyote or something like that or whatever your situation may be. Uh, revolvers can jam. Uh, there was actually a situation, uh, we'll probably end up having Jerry get on the channel at some point. I'd like to talk to him about this uh, in a little bit deeper detail. But when Jerry set that world record, he actually had a little bit of a malfunction with his revolver. And a lot of people assume that Jerry undersprings his revolver so he can run him so fast. But the truth is, he actually oversprings him because he's so freaking fast he'll outrun the action if he doesn't overspring him a bit. So he actually ended up having an issue and his revolver didn't work and end up being some, you know, strange little issue. Now, that situation is a little bit more exacting because Jerry is a guy that runs revolvers for a living and, you know, he runs thousands of rounds through his revolvers every single year, if not every month, right? So your mileage may vary, but the answer, the, I guess the, the short answer is, yes, they can jam. Uh, do they have a you know, a very good track record for reliability? Absolutely. Is there a, a strong chance that your revolver is ever going to jam on you? Probably not. You're never going to have an issue. I think the biggest issue with revolvers is manual of arms and the individual knowing how to run the gun properly and how to operate the gun with a, a level of proficiency that you would want to have if you were involved in some gun battle and here you are running your six-shooter. Okay, there's a reason we have Glocks. You know, there's a reason we have automatics that we can drop the mag and reload really quickly. It also becomes a capacity issue. Six shots of revolver ammo versus 17 shots, or in many cases with a lot of these modern uh, handguns like the M17 that hold 22 rounds, you can quickly see why, you know, granted a revolver cartridge is generally going to be a little bit more powerful, okay? Um, having those follow-up shots and automatic for the average person, especially for being able to reload easier, pistols do make a lot more logistical sense especially in carrying your uh, your extra magazines and stuff. Uh, JX actually does make uh, some really nice mag pouches, and they also make AR-15 uh, magazine pouches as well that are Kydex, uh, just like their fat boy holster here, or fat guy holster. Okay, um, but another issue with revolvers might be, okay, uh, you know, 357 Magnum's a great cartridge, right? I've seen a lot of people that carry those little bitty I mean, this isn't a dig on Smith & Wesson because I, I love these revolvers, but you've seen those little bitty, like, snub nose 357 mags that have, like, a, what, eight-shot uh, cylinder? And you think, wow, eight shots for 357 Magnum. Now we're talking. But what kind of velocity are you actually getting out of that bullet out of that little bitty barrel? You know, that that but starts to become sort of a, a performance issue, right? Uh, you know, Tim Harmson and I, Military Arms Channel, were talking about this not too long ago. And we were talking about, uh, I had a, uh, I forget which model Smith & Wesson it was. I don't have it here to show you, but um, it's a 357 Magnum with like a two and a half inch barrel. And I, and you know, and it's a five shot. So it's it's more like a J frame or not a J frame, but it's like that smaller frame. That's like a five shot frame. And I was telling, uh, telling Tim, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm a surgeon with this pistol. I can shoot it well. And, and it's kind of nice to have 357 Magnum in your hand. And, uh, and he kind of, <laughs> he looked at me weird. He said, well, well, Eric, what's the point of having a full bore 357 Magnum in that little bitty barrel? You're basically just getting nine millimeter performance anyway. And you know, when you think about it, he, he's, he's pretty close to being correct. You have to have that extra barrel length to even realize the performance of the cartridge that you're shooting out of the gun. So one possible drawback with revolvers might be that unless you're running a full-size revolver or, you know, a longer barrel, you're not going to really realize the full power out of the gun anyway. So 
I'm not saying that you shouldn't carry a revolver. I love revolvers. I love my J-Frame Smiths. They are fantastic. But I wanted to make this video because we get that question quite a bit. People go, well, are revolvers more reliable? Do, do they not jam? Do, do, they, you know, do they ever jam? Well, I guess the other additive that I would kind of put in here would be that, you know, don't ever rely on a piece of technology. You know, sometimes that could be a false sense of security, right? If I put my revolver in my pocket and I go, well, this thing never jams, because someone on the internet said that revolvers never jam, right? Well, now you have a false sense of security. Now you're, you're going to go, well, I've got a bomb-proof gun. I don't need to train with it. I don't need to practice with it. I don't need to, you know, learn how to reload with it or how to clear a stoppage or how to, you know, realize when the gun is done and to go grab another gun or do something else or, or remove myself from the fight or whatever the case may be, right? Uh, primer depth is important on revolvers. If you've got some ammo that's out of spec, it can cause the cylinder not to turn. Maybe you've got some bad ammo with some loose primer pockets. When you fire around and that primer offsets, it might lock the cylinder up. It could lock the entire gun up. If the ammunition is not crimped properly, those rounds, the inertia from the gun shooting could actually cause that round to work its way out if there's not a proper crimp. And now you've seized the whole gun up. You might get one or two shots, and as soon as that cylinder rotates to so the nose of that projectile sticking out, it can't turn. Now the gun is locked up. And in a severe enough situation, you might not even be able to get the cylinder open anyway. So, yes, revolvers jam, but it is a combination, all right, of wear and tear, quality of ammunition. If you are going to carry a revolver, you need to make sure that you have the utmost quality ammunition. Make sure the crimp looks good. Make sure the primer seating depth is perfect. So when you start to break all those things down, revolvers ain't all are quite made up to be in terms of that, you know, age old internet lore of, oh, well, revolvers don't jam. Just give your old lady a revolver. She, uh, she won't need to carry any other gun. Just give her a revolver. Listen, don't get into a false sense of security thinking that you don't need to know how to manipulate a mechanical device. This revolver is a mechanical device, just like this pistol is a mechanical device. And each one has its own interesting and, and, and you know, odd set of circumstances you have to get into in terms of how to, how to manipulate them, okay? So always know your manual of, ar manual of arms, no matter what you're running, okay? So wanted to make this quick video. Uh, I know I'm going to probably ruffle some feathers, but look, that's the reality of the situation. Revolvers are not perfect, and uh, you have to understand that it's not perfect and be able to, you know, pivot in any way that you need to, uh, you know, to, to know what you're dealing with. Every single firearm has its own unique manual of arms, and it has its own little strengths, weaknesses, and little quirks and intricacies, and you should know all of them, especially if you're going to carry a firearm for self-defense. Don't ever just throw something in your pocket and say, well, I'm good. I know what's going on because not quite always the case. One other thing about revolvers, too, before we go, is that you can fire a revolver from inside of a coat pocket. Okay, uh, an automatic, of course, the slide has to reciprocate. So, you know, you probably may not, you know, may not be able to get away with that. But I've heard a lot of situations where guys will just be, you know, walking around with their revolver in their coat pocket. You can have your, you can have the gun in your hand and nobody knows you got it. And if, if something gets slippery, you just shoot through the jacket. And I have tried it. I had an old crappy jacket I was going to throw away and I, I took my wheel gun and tested it and it, and it was actually pretty intuitive to be able to shoot something close to me, even just from the hip. So that's one of the benefits of a revolver too, is that you can you can shoot them from inside, you know, inside your coat pocket, which is kind of cool. So always understand what you're dealing with. I guess that's the main point of today's video, but I wanted to answer this question and thank you guys so much for tuning in today. And, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful week and, uh, Yes, revolvers jam, but the, the, the situations are a little limited on, on, on how they can jam. Uh, go check out JX Tactical. Really great guys. Go get yourself a fat, fat guy holster. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.